Hi class, welcome to 1st and 2nd Corinthians with Lee University Online. My name is Joshua Rice and I'll be serving as your professor for this term. I'm excited to see in looking through the course list several students that I've had in the past. Welcome to you and hello and nice to meet those of you who I've not been privileged to serve before in past classes. I really do believe this is going to be a great term. I taught this course on campus during the summer and just after I was finished uh, Lee asked me to write the course for the online program. I was immediately really excited about this because I just graduated last year with a PhD in New Testament studies from the Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago and in fact my dissertation was on the subject of 1st and 2nd Corinthians. That dissertation has just been published in my first book by Wiffenstock Press just last month and so I have been very very immersed in the study of these New Testament documents and I'm excited uh, to share that journey with you during the next eight weeks. Well, if you will, log on to the Moodle site and go ahead and access the course syllabus so that we can gain confidence in knowing what my expectations for the course are and what the contents of the course are as we move forward and begin today. You'll notice, first of all, that there's one simple textbook that's required for the course. It's in paperback, and it's by Ben Witherington. Uh, ben Witherington is a phenomenal New Testament scholar who has taught for years at Asbury Seminary, which is a Methodist seminary sharing our roots as uh, Church of God, for those of you who come from that movement. And I trust that you're really going to enjoy this textbook. It's a rare one in that it covers both 1st and 2nd Corinthians in a single volume, and it's cheap. You can get it through the Lee University bookstore or online at Amazon.com. Well, scroll down to the evaluation section of the syllabus, and let's look at the course contents for just a few moments. First, you'll notice that 40% of your grade consists of threaded discussions. There will be two of these per week, and I want to be very clear as to what I'm looking for in your discussion posts. Number one, I'm not looking for your devotional or personal thoughts on 1st and 2nd Corinthians. This is a college class. I'm looking for your engagement with the Witherington textbook. Discussion posts are the equivalent of your attendance in class. The only way I know you've attended is if you tell me something about what Witherington says. Engage with Witherington in those posts. Be assured of this, I read and respond to every post. The only way that you can not get all the points for a given post is to post late, initial posts are due on Friday by midnight each week, or to fail to respond to a follow-up question that I ask toward your discussion post. I try to be as engaged as I can during this part of the class simply because it's the guts of the learning process, the weekly reading and the weekly posting. So you want to post high quality material. You also notice when we get started this week that the format for my posting might be different than what you're used to. I use a question and answer format, meaning that rather than simply going and beginning your own thread, you're going to respond to my thread. This means that you're not able to see any of your other peers post before you post initially. It just helps push you to do your best work in the class week to week. A second component of your grade consists of three reflection papers. None of these are due this week, so we won't spend a lot of time here. But you're going to pick three different chapters in 1st or 2nd Corinthians to go deeper into, and you're going to write a reflection paper based on each one of those chapters. Not your thoughts, but your engagement with Witherington on those particular chapters. And finally, there is a course project, an exegetical research paper, that's due in pieces along the way. So think of it in two ways. Obviously, there's a research paper due at the end of the course, but part of your grade is following an efficient process that I've laid out for writing that research paper. So I'll be very involved in the process with you which actually begins this week. More on that in a moment. Allow me to say something about my policy on late work. I realize that life happens, and I also realize that in this eight-week accelerated format, the course load is intense, particularly a senior-level course like this one, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. I cannot mediate between all of your reasons for turning in late work, and with almost 100 online students, I've pretty much seen them all, so this is the policy that I abide by. I'll allow you one get out of jail free card for late work during the term. You don't need to tell me the reason why the work is late. I don't want to know. Um, 
I simply want you to send me an email in the memo line of the email. Just write, get out of jail free, and let me know you need an extension or that you're turning in the work late. It's no problem. I'll check your name off that you used your get out of jail free pass, and you won't receive any points off. After that, I do not accept any late work, simply because I want to keep the class moving, I want to stay thoroughly engaged, and I feel unable to do that and hindered in doing that by students that fall way behind. And if you fall way behind, the odds of you catching up and getting a decent grade in the class are very, very minimal anyway. So one get out of jail free card, I'd encourage you not to use it to wait on a crisis. I've had students who have been hospitalized during the term, students get in car wrecks, you never know what can happen. So rather than using it just because you're having a hard time keeping up, why not wait on a crisis so you have a little cushion as you move throughout the course. Okay, this week, Unit 1, we're going to be diving into the context of a college-level reading of 1 Corinthians. That context is twofold. Number one, what can we know about the city of ancient Corinth? And how does our knowledge about ancient Corinth inform our reading of 1 Corinthians? Number two, what can we know about the relationship that Paul had with this church? What was the progress like by which Paul came to found this church? Where has Paul gone since this church was founded? And who were the major personalities that surround the dynamics that are taking place between Paul and this church? Those are the sorts of questions we're going to be diving into as you read Witherington's introduction and engage with him in your discussion posts. You'll also see that the first step of your research paper is due, which is simply isolating a theme or a passage in 1 and 2 Corinthians that you'd like to write about, along with some preliminary questions that you would like to answer in your paper about that text. Of course, that's going to require reading around in 1 and 2 Corinthians, which is a great first step to the class anyway. If you have any questions or need to interact with me, please feel free to email me anytime at jrice at leeuniversity.edu. I have a 24-hour response policy when it comes to your emails, and I will get back to you within a day. If we need to have a conversation on the phone or via Skype, we can set that up. My cell phone number is 404-665-7007. You probably won't catch me, but you can leave a message, and I will call you back within 24 hours. Once again, I'm really excited to share this journey with you. I think it's going to be a great term, and I'm really appreciative that you took this course. God bless. Have a great week.